Um, and this practice has been going on for many, many years. I don't know uh, whether there is a kind of like black uh, market business. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a while that I haven't uploaded a new content for some reason. So guys, I'm really sorry about this. However, I hope that today's topic is going to be intriguing and is to become a discussable subject among us. More importantly, it can provide some insight into the advantages of and drawbacks of wearing school uniforms. You might be wondering why pupils in a few developed nations like in the US and uh, some countries in, the, in Europe like in the UK, Ireland and Scotland wear school uniforms. And all students in the under and developing nations like in Indonesia and other uh, nations in Asia are obliged to wear school uniform. So I'll tell you what. Some people think that uniform can bring cohesions within students regardless of their socio-economic backgrounds. And other people believe that when the society, when the aspects of society, I mean, are certain, then wearing such school uniforms are unnecessary, like here in Switzerland, in France, since, the since 1968, um, up to now, the government and school do not require students to wear school uniforms, with a few exceptions. Likewise in Germany since the 90s to date, with a few exceptions. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what I do know more and what I know a little bit about which country started off with the idea of school uniforms, whether uh, students who wear school uniforms until they graduate from high school or senior high school and why school uniforms are imperative in the UK, in the US and particularly in Indonesia. And last but not least, that is also important to know whether the government subsidizes or provides uh, students with school uniforms or the parents buy school uniforms. And of course, there will be some different points of view um, in regard to these uh, school uniforms from Indonesia. So if you are keen on this topic, then let's go through together. But before kicking this topic off, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Please click the subscribe and as well as the bell icon so that uh, you will be informed once a new video is uploaded and also it gives me more motivations to create interesting uh, topic or subject when I see more subscribers so now let's get started okay as a matter of fact it's not easy task to trace which academic institutions that initially introduced school uniforms but the history tells that school uniforms are not a tradition of public schools in England. Instead, school uniforms are very common among charity schools in the UK. Christ Hospitals in London, for instance, is a charity school founded in 1552 that took up the orphan and other unfortunate children from the parish and then they taught them. Their uniforms were believed to be provided by the parish and the uniforms alone may vary depending on the charity schools, public schools and also its design somewhat follow the best practice. Now let's have a look at the variety of school uniforms in the UK. Based on the news written by Pan from Quartz in 2018, that there were more than 80% of secondary schools in the UK that were required to wear uniforms. And the number of schools that impose school uniforms are seemingly to grow ever since. 
and about school uniforms in the US, Battery, a journalist of uh, the Washington Post, reported that in 1996, President Bill Clinton called for public schools to impose school uniforms, and since then, more and more public schools set up their dress codes or uniforms. And, uh, you know, actually, uh, the mandatory of wearing school uniforms in the U.S. was taken place in the, in the late of 80s following the gang violence and crime. And by 2015, about 75% of district's public schools in the U.S. were required to wear school uniforms. And this occurs in the area with high poverty rates. I'm going to show you how the uh, public schools or schools in the US set up their dress code. So have a look at these photos. And you know that students in Indonesia are also obliged to wear school uniforms. So let's have a look at these photos so that you can figure out, okay? So now let me tell you about whether or not students wear school uniforms till they graduate from senior high school. Well, based on the article that I read, students in the UK wear their school uniforms till they graduate from senior high school. But students in the US from the age of 16 to 18, they don't have to wear school uniforms unless they go to a senior high school which belongs to the same academic institutions which I think it's a private school. So, frankly speaking, I neither have been to the UK uh, nor to the US uh, to discover whether students wear uh, school uniforms until they graduate from senior high school. I would really appreciate if you guys are from these respective nations or whoever live in those countries uh, would like to share your experience, then please write down your comments on this video. Well, unlike in the UK and uh, in the US where students might be and might not be wearing school uniforms till they uh, graduate from senior high school in Indonesia, wearing school uniforms is or becomes a very important aspect. The students wear uh, or start wearing their school uniforms from primary to senior high school. So I can assure you uh, this because I was born and raised in Indonesia. Um, now let me tell you about why are so imperative wearing school uniforms in the UK, in the US and especially in Indonesia. Some empirical studies documented that, you know, school uniforms helped students to become more disciplined than before be well integrated and also to economize the parents' uh, spending. But other people considered that uniforms resemble uh, to the military and it can halt uh, the creativity and so on. So let's see what the researchers find. So uh, researchers like Stanley in, in 1996 uh, from the uh, California State University he conducted his research on school uh, uniforms, uh, which involved more than uh, 12,000 uh, students at middle uh, school or uh, secondary school. And then uh, Sansis uh, in 2013 from Reno uh, College of Education of University of Nevada conducted the same topic, uh, which involved um, uh, around 1,000 uh, 1, students uh, uh, at the middle school also uh, from ne northern Nevada and they documented that school uniforms are rather beneficial uh, than detrimental to the uh, students and also uh, the uh, school itself. In the sense of what? Uh, they, they claim uh, their results uh, are beneficial in the sense of education um, is you know improving the quality of education is improving and also um, the rates of absenteeism are decreasing 
and uh, more disciplines, uh, self esteem are increasing, and also um, they believe that you know uh, school uniforms can avoid uh, students from uh, being assaulted and also betrayed among themselves because this happens because you know uh, they are wearing uh, the same pattern of uh, dress codes or uniforms. Uh, meanwhile, the equality issue, order and uh, the, so the aspects of uh, society are remaining uncertain in Indonesia and perhaps many other factors that drive the government of Indonesia to impose uniform to public schools. So if you wish to conduct your own study whether or not uh, school uniforms are beneficial or meaningless, then I encourage you to uh, study uh, this research in, in, the country, in a country or a certain country where uh, school uniforms are mandatory. Okay? So now let me tell you about whether the government subsidizes or uh, provides students with school uniforms or the parents uh, buy school uniforms. You know that school uniforms escalate the revenues uh, for retailers not only in the UK uh, and in the US it is also for retailers in Indonesia every year and uh, those fortunate parents can buy the school uniforms for their children without a problem uh, but those unfortunate parents can apply for the government grant related to the school uniforms and, um, and uh, of course uh, this happens only in the US and in the UK uh, but also, uh, there's, uh, there will be like certain uh, requirements which need to be met in order to obtain uh, the uh, government, um, the grant from the government. You know, talking about school uniforms, I remember going from one store to another store uh, with my parents when I was child to buy uh, suitable uh, uniforms, or. Uh, to buy the uniforms material uh, prior to the uh, by, prior to entering uh, school or uh, in the course of uh, academic year whenever it's necessary but uh, either way I could uh, inherit uh, the used uniforms from my uh, cousin uh, for example or uh, other relatives uh, who were older than me uh, but over time you know the level of of playing field changes and today public schools in Indonesia um, supply the uh, uniforms material uh, for their students so the parents can buy uh, can buy the material uh, for uh, uniforms uh, from that school or from the school where uh, their children are about to study and then um, they will go with their kids to the uh, tailor uh, or seamstress uh, to make the uh, uniform. And um, and anyway, I'm 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 still not sure uh, whether uh, this occurs uh, in all public schools in Indonesia or um, some schools in East Java. You know something like uh, government grant. Uh, as far as I know, for school uniforms in Indonesia doesn't exist. So this can become a substantial problem for the parents who are needy. Let me give you an example. The uniforms material for male students at senior high school can cost about 105 US dollar uh, or 1 million and 375,000 rupiah for two or three sets of uniforms plus training sportswear. And uh, this course may vary based on the city where the public schools are located. In addition to that, the parents have to pay uh, 40 bucks or uh, 40 dollars or 500,000 rupiah for the tailors or the seamstress. And in total, it's about 145 US dollar. And you know that female students uh, will cost more money, assuming that they are Muslims, so obviously they need more uh, uniforms material. And the difference uh, will be 
20, uh, 15 and 20 US dollar. So, of course, this is uh, more expensive as compared to uh, male students. So, in my view, I think that the schools or the government can either grant uh, uh, the uniforms uh, partially or completely uh, to the students who are coming from the unfortunate households. You know that uh, 145 uh, US dollar or 165 US dollar for school uniforms material is really a lot, a lot of money for them. Um, and this practice has been going on for many, many years. I don't know uh, whether there is a kind of like black uh, market business behind the supply of uh, school uniforms material in all or some or few public schools in Indonesia. You know, you know I can say this because uh, the parents actually can buy uh, the, uh, uh, the standard uniform or the material for uh, uniform, school uniforms at uh, retailers outside uh, with lower price. You know, the aim of sending children to the public school for the parents is to obtain uh, a good quality of education besides uh, pay less, uh, much less uh, money on uh, education as uh, than sending their children to the uh, private school. So, understanding of advantages of wearing school uniforms are important, but what is more important to me is that um, the school administration should be aware of fundamental uh, problems faced by the unfortunate households. And um, the, the authorities also should, uh, you know, take the uniformity policy into account if the, the government, local government, wants to alleviate the poverty. Well, I hope that you guys like this topic. If so, uh, then please don't forget to hit the, the like button and the subscribe, also the bell icon. Your comments, feedback are highly appreciated and definitely you are free to share this video with your networks. Okay, before ending this video, I'd like you to hear two different uh, comments on school uniforms in Indonesia. It is in Pasa. But don't worry, uh, English subtitle is available for you. And please let me know what you think of this. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hmm, ini pendapat saya tentang ketentuan seragam sekolah di Indonesia. Ya, kenapa kok di Indonesia siswa atau pelajar ditentukan seragamnya? Menurut pendapat saya, karena di Indonesia kan beragam tingkat sosial tingkat kesejahteraan sosial masyarakatnya beragam, ada dari kalangan bawah, menengah dan atas, dengan diadakannya seragam, maka tidak akan kelihatan, oh ini dari kelompok sosial bawah, ini dari kelompok sosial menengah, ini dari kelompok sosial atas, tidak akan kelihatan bedanya, karena semuanya memakai baju yang sama jadi, begitu menurut saya salah satunya kemudian hmm, yang kedua menunjukkan identitas sekolahnya masing-masing jadi misalkan ketemu di jalan, oh ini seragamnya anak SMA, karena seragamnya putih abu. Oh ini anak SD, karena seragamnya putih merah. Oh ini SMP, karena seragamnya putih biru. gitu ya. Karena anak sekarang besar-besar, kita kadang susah membedakan mana anak SMP, mana SMA. Dari seragamnya akan kita tahu. Begitu juga dengan seragam khas. Umumnya di Indonesia ada seragam khas, masing-masing sekolah punya seragam khas atau seragam kebanggaannya. Jadi kalau keluar, oh langsung tahu badiknya ini, oh ini badiknya anak semaha, berarti keluar, oh ini semaha. Oh ini ya badik, eh, seragamnya anak SMK 3 Kediri jurusan Boga, beda lagi. Hmm, jadi menurut saya seperti itu. 
penggunaan seragam di sekolah itu sebenarnya uh, akar sejarahnya bisa kita tarik dari uh, periode uh, kebijakan pendidikan di Orde Baru. Ya. Jadi Orde Baru itu uh, adalah sebuah rezim yang dipimpin oleh militer, ya. dalam artian uh, Jenderal Soeharto itu adalah militer. Jadi uh, logika militer itu uh, banyak meng, uh, berperan di dalam uh, membangun uh, sebuah uh, bangsa. Jadi uh, keseragaman di dalam satu pasukan itu segala-galanya. Karena supaya mudah mengenali. Ya. Dan keseragaman itu juga uh, memudahkan untuk uh, pengaturan. Uh, dan kondisi militeritis, mili, militeristik ini di uh, cangkokkan di dalam sebuah kultur uh, kehidupan sipil ya kan? dalam artian uh, kalau kita bicara tentang seragam anak-anak sekolah itu sebenarnya uh, kalau ada penyeragaman memang di lembaga-lembaga tertentu memang ada penyeragaman kayak di sekolah-sekolah katolik itu memang untuk uh, dia membangun disiplin uh, yang sangat uh, baik memang uh, di dalam ke- keseragaman itu karena gampang untuk dikontrol. Memang uh, ada beberapa sekolah yang ke- keagamaan juga uh, mengadopsi tentang keseragaman uh, di dalam uh, berbaju ya kan berpakaian. Kalau kita lihat uh, apa namanya anak-anak kita itu masuk ke orde reformasi kemudian sekarang ini sampai sekarang itu masih ada uh, semacam sisa-sisa atau residu dari uh, Uh, pemikiran tentang militeristik itu yang masuk ke dalam ranah uh, sipil ya kan sebenarnya demokrasi itu kan prinsipnya itu adalah uh, supremasi sipil ya kan jadi militer harus tunduk di dalam uh, pemerintahan atau kekuasaan sipil ya kan jadi mestinya ada semacam kebebasan ya kan di, di dalam keseragaman itu uh, salah satu kelemahannya itu kan menghabisi sebuah kreativitas ya kan Jadi anak-anak itu tidak memiliki keliaran di dalam ide-ide atau berpikir ya kan atau spontanitas ya kan kadang-kadang dia masih nengok kanan nengok kiri supaya me- menseragamkan dengan uh, apa yang ada di temannya ya itu itu bagian dari sisi-sisi gelap dari sebuah uh, penyeragaman ada uniformity ya. jadi efeknya memang uh, kita kalah jauh dengan negara-negara yang memiliki uh, filosofi kebebasan anak-anak untuk mengekspresikan gagasannya uh, masih sekarang yang mestinya itu sekarang itu gagasan Mas Menteri itu uh, Nadi Makarim itu merdeka belajar ya secara filosofi harus dicabut itu ya kan kayak penyeragaman penyeragaman uh, tentang berpakaian karena itu juga apa yang ada di luar yang kita pakai itu kadang-kadang mempengaruhi apa yang di dalam kalau kita lihat misalnya kayak kalau orang itu pakai eh, apa namanya eh, seragam yang di luar mempengaruhi yang di dalam itu jelas orang memakai seragam misalnya kayak apa namanya eh, seragam silat gitu kan sepatu kayak misalnya kayak miliknya Jackie Chan atau siapa itu yang mendirikan Jet Kundu gitu ya orang suka petantang-petantang ya penyeragaman itu punya implikasi terhadap apa yang ada di dalam sisi-sisi dalam dari se- pikiran dari manusia ya kan jadi prinsipnya keseragaman itu memudahkan untuk diatur ya kan tapi membunuh kreativitas dan itu bagi Orde Baru nggak masalah bodoh amat ya kan yang penting uh, adalah pembangunan di atas segala-galanya dimana dimensi manusia yang punya kebebasan untuk mengekspresikan itu ya ditaruh di nomor sekian oke okay, itu aja mas Didi and if you want to know what I think about their comment is that to me uh, their comments are very insightful and also very interesting so oke okay, I'm Didi and thanks a lot for watching take care And see you again next time. Ciao.